Hi Maker, it's Charlotte with Makesy, and today I'm here with Scylla to give you a beginner's guide on how to make pillar candles. Hi Makers! We're so excited to talk to you about all of our tips and tricks on how to be successful making pillar candles. So first things first, let's talk about the wicks. Wicks are typically the most important part of your candle. I mean, you can't make a candle without them. So wicks are also normally the last piece that we select when we're making a candle. Before you choose your wick, you need to know what wax you're using, which mold you're using, if you're using fragrance dye or any other additives, and then we can get started picking our wick. The easiest way to choose a wick is to go to our wick selection guide on mixy.com Tell us what wax you're using, what diameter your mold is, and a few other questions. In a few minutes, you'll have the right wick for your pillar candles. So that is your last step, but let's work backwards and talk about a few of the other components too. <laughs> so Scylla, let's talk molds. Okay. So from my experience, these molds on its own feel amazing. Like the, they're super soft. Super soft. Super soft. My favorite kind of molds are silicone molds just because I've had experiences with tougher molds and they have broken my pillar candles as I was demolding. That's like a candle maker's nightmare. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> all this work and your candle broke. <laughs> honestly, yeah. And I had like events coming up and I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do now? But, <laughs> so I had to switch out all my molds to silicone, which are my ultimate favorite. So if there's any molds to go to, these are the go-to yeah. silicone molds. You guys can see like, the jiggle in this like yeah. it's actually really soft this is our super silicone and these are really the softest silicone molds available on the market so they make mm -hmm. it really easy to demold a pillar candle candle which i'll show you in a bit but these are awesome sauce yes okay so you've got wicks you've got molds wax vip here yeah we need to have a good wax for our pillar candles yeah. so um, a couple of things. Uh, there are many waxes out there, including ones that we offer at Makesy, um, that are designated and designed for pillar candles. So a pillar candle wax is typically going to be a harder wax. If we go with like a coconut blend or something, that's going to be a bit soft. It will make unmolding harder and it may make your candle more susceptible to getting like dense divots or sweating or melting or just not burning properly. So um, stick to a wax that is a harder wax blend, like one that's designated for pillars or something like 100% beeswax can be suitable as well. So we have several wax blends at makesy.com that you can use for pillar candles. Um, if you're looking for a bright white, that's gonna be more like a paraffin wax. If you're looking for something more creamy, that can be a soy paraffin, brings in some of those more creamy tones to it. Um, but both are great waxes. You should melt them to about 150 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, once they've reached that temperature, you can remove from heat, add in your fragrance, any dye you're going to use, and then pour your candles. So let's talk wick centering. What are your tips here? So what happened with one of my molds, quick story. Um, I wicked it without knowing where the center was <laughs> and my wick was totally off. So now I tend to flip it. Yeah. I flip the mold out in yeah. and out and then I wick it just to get it centered. But that's my technique. Yes. That's a great technique. Um, obviously, you need to have a hole in the bottom to yes. pull your wick through. Um, you can use a wick bar like this to center it. That's gonna help you ensure that um, your wick doesn't go off center or like fall in. You told in. me one of yeah. yours fell, a wick fell in yeah. or sunk in. So using a wick bar will help avoid all that stuff you don't wanna yeah. have happen to your candle yeah. while you're making them. So um, you can get a wick bar like this on our website, um, but it's really easy to use. And then when you're done, you basically just unmold your candle. So um, what suggestions or tips do you have for makers on how to unmold your candle? Unmold. So for my technique, whenever I do pillar candles, I let them um, dry throughout the night and under room temperature. But unless you are, you really need one or you have a, you know, a client waiting for their candle, I tend to pop mine in maybe for four hours just to be secure that when I demold it, it won't crack or break in the mold. Yeah. Because you're gonna have to start all over again. <laughs> and yeah, these are just more a little more complicated, but so fun to make. And yeah. 
they're they get easier as you practice so practice makes practice as with sure. everything right yeah. like yeah. starting making pillar candles can seem really intimidating yeah. at first but once you get into it you realize it's just a lot of fun honestly mm -hmm. um, you guys saw how easy it was to unmold from the silicone mold because of how flexible it is um, and then as Scylla said, you just want to make sure that the candle's fully cooled. Yeah. So make sure that you don't unmold it prematurely when maybe the outer shell has solidified yeah. and not the inside. Yeah. Um, and then you can also, depending on how many candles you've made, you could pop it in the fridge for five to 10 minutes to just make that unmolding process a bit easier as well. Mm -hmm. So those are our top tips for getting started making pillar candles. Um, we have lots of videos and guides on our website as well to help you be successful in your making journey. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to stay in the know on all the latest makers tips and tricks. Now go make it happen.